It's giving time. We ask that you would sow a seed to Payne Chapel. And if you would like to do so, you can do it by cash app, dollar sign, Payne Chapel, Beham. Dollar sign, Payne Chapel, Beham. Or you can write us a check and send it to 1825 Center Way South, Birmingham, Alabama, 35205. As our usher comes, we ask that you lift up the name of Jesus.
does he keep us safe? Has he kept us through this pandemic? Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. It's the highest praise. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. We bless your holy name. We pray now, God, that you will continue to speak and move, rest in this place. Dwell among us. Give us peace, assurance, and knowing that we are safe in your arms. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Let's all say together, amen. Come on now, praise the Lord. Y'all put your hands together and give God praise today. For surely God is good, God is great, and God is greatly to be praised. Amen. Amen. God is an excellent God. God is an awesome God, and that is the God that we serve, that we worship on today. Greetings, and welcome to Payne Chapel, Birmingham. We are indeed that you... Glad that you have joined us for worship today. Y'all give a good God bless you to our worship participants today. Amen. Amen. Our music ministry. Amen. A special thank you to my auntie, as I call her, Sister Arthurine Shackleford from Huntsville, Alabama. Amen. Born and bred in Birmingham. And she thought it not the robbery to come and minister unto the Lord at Payne Chapel, Birmingham, on today. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is preaching time. It is preaching time. And I don't know about y'all, but I had the kind of week where I said, Lord, I need a word on today. Amen. Amen. It's just something about coming into the house, into the presence of the Lord to get what you need. It's just something about it. We give a shout out to our virtual sanctuary on today, but it's just something about being in God's house. Amen. Amen. Two years in isolation taught me to appreciate coming inside of God's house. Amen. Amen. We thank Sister Lolita Noel Seltzer for leading us in our prayer as well as our scripture. I want to lift up one verse for us today. One verse for us today. That's verse number eight coming from 2 Peter chapter 3. Uh, but do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. Amen? Amen. And our thought of reflection for today is you can't hurry God. Uh -huh. Text somebody, call somebody, tell somebody, you can't hurry God. God, remind them, remind them, remind them, remind yourself on today. You can't hurry God. Amen? Amen. Musical giants like Albertina Walker, y'all remember? Uh-huh. Reverend James Cleveland, you remember? Huh? Uh, they've ministered lyrics that said, please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. Y'all remember that? It's a throwback classic. Please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. And it's a request for others to be patient with us as we are growing by God's grace. Uh, however, it is also a request for patience uh, based upon the fact that God's patience has been displayed toward us. Hallelujah. Are we not grateful that God was patient with us? 
Uh, there might have been a time in our lives or even this week, maybe this morning, where we got on our own nerves, where we frustrated ourselves. And if we don't know all that God knows, can you imagine the level of patience that God has with us? I'm not talking about just with the stuff that we do, but the stuff that we think, the thoughts that don't make it to our mouths, the actions that are in our hearts that we don't always do. Can you imagine? Hallelujah. We thank God for the patience that has been displayed toward us. Amen. Amen. In his book, A, A Love Worth Giving, author Max Lucado makes the following statement. Uh, he said, maybe no one has told you about God's patience and God's willingness to put up with you. I'll wait. <laughs> huh? We have a tendency to read things and automatically think of somebody other than ourselves. And, and as we read, even with these statements, we, we automatically apply it to so-and-so and such-and-such. Such. Oh, well, they should have been at church today to hear this. <laughs> Huh? How many text messages and, and links do we send to folks? How many phone calls do we make to say, hey, make sure you tune in and listen to? They show said something that could help you right about now. Huh? Uh, but Arthur Max Lucado reminds us that sometimes uh, uh, we don't hear about it. Uh, maybe nobody has told you uh, uh, about the level of patience that God has uh, in dealing with you. Uh, we find written in Psalm 103, verse number 8, the Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. Stare at the proof of God's patience. Uh, those thousands sunsets that you never thank God for. Hmm? Uh, uh, those times you used God's name only when you cussed. And oh my, those promises uh, uh, that we often make, get me out of this and I'll never tell another lie. If broken promises were lumber, we could build an entire subdivision. End quote. <laughs> Just so you know, I didn't write it. <laughs> it was written uh -huh, by somebody else. The truth, uh, beloved of God, the truth of the matter is we just don't like to wait. Ooh, it's quiet. <laughs> we don't like to wait. Uh, yes, today it's right now, right away. As a matter of fact, it's what experts call, and I've said it before, what is it? A microwave generation. There are 24 hours in a day, the same as our ancestors had hundreds of years ago. Yet we have more technology, we have more inventions that propel us to work, but not necessarily accomplishing more than they did yesteryear. Or uh, rather, we are working faster. We're working faster while it is day, for night is coming when no man can work. We don't like to wait. Why wait three minutes for water to boil an egg when we can get the same product from the microwave in a minute and a half? Uh, no need for a slow cooker uh, because we can steam our vegetables inside of the bag in the microwave. Why pop popcorn on the stove with oil in a pan when we can pop a bag in the microwave with all of the fake butter and flavors? Hmm? Breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert, and all of the snacks in between, they can come from the microwave. They even have a power quick pot for when you want to speed up your slow cooking pressure inside the pot makes the food cook fast. Fast food is too slow. Now we can order ahead. <laughs> huh? Even instant coffee takes too long. Now we have a Keurig. And of course we have the monumental tribute to our desires for immediacy, smartphones, and Wi-Fi. 
My God, today we're always finding new ways to get around waiting in line or even waiting at all from rapid passes at theme parks to making every effort to avoid the post office, the library, and even the DMV all together. And so it is, we apply this microwave mentality uh, to most aspects of our lives. Uh, if it will cut down on time, then that's what we want. Huh? Uh, if it'll save us some time, then we, we want it. By hook or crook, we, we, we want it. But beloved of God, with all of our comings and our goings, uh, all of our technological advances, and even all the strength within our bodies, uh, I have still learned a great phenomenon, and that is we still can't hurry God. Uh, we still uh, cannot hurry God. God. There's a song about it. I like to hear it. Uh, here it goes. Uh, you can't hurry God. You just have to wait. Uh, you have to trust him and give him time no matter how long it takes because you can't hurry God. Cue up my harmonica, Brother Brian. I think I'm ready. Uh, now, please don't get me wrong. Many of these developments are wonderful. Why wait in line needlessly? I get it. I get it. I'm, I happily embrace the improvements, but at some point we should pause to ask whether having it our way right away is leading us to overblown expectations of, of instant gratification in all aspects of our lives. Uh, not only are we impatient about fast food, coffee, information, thrill rides, but are we losing our capacity to be patient altogether? Uh, Arthur David Mathis reminds us that in the midst of the increasingly speedy expectations of our day, one aspect of Jesus Christ uh, is his perfect patience. Did y'all turn that corner with me? Mm -hmm. uh, no one surpasses Jesus or even comes close to his ability to handle us with care, even in our worst fits of sin, with the life-changing strength of gentle kindness. Let's dig a little bit deeper, shall we? Uh, Peter introduces himself in chapter 1 as a bond servant and apostle of Christ. In, in this second letter, Peter addresses the believers in Asia Minor because they were struggling outside and inside of the church. Did you, did you catch what's happening uh, in Birmingham? Oh, my goodness. In Asia Minor, <laughs> the believers who made up the church are struggling outside of the church as well as inside of the church. Uh, there was persecution and suffering surrounding the church on the outside, uh, and there were strife and dissension inside among the believers who composed the church. False teachers and heretics were on the loudspeaker drowning out the voices of the righteous. It seemed like they were stuck in a ridiculous cycle of the same thing happening over and over. We've been there, haven't we? Uh, we seek refuge from life and life's situations only to find out that what we ran away from and more are awaiting our arrival right there in our hiding spot? Have we been there for that flood of feeling overwhelmed that makes us feel trapped, stuck, and doomed because there's nowhere to run and nowhere to hide? Uh, have we been there when it feels like it's bad outside and the moment of stepping indoors, uh, we discover that it's worse on the inside. I thought I could make it through this. 
but everything I know, everything that I've tried, everything that I've tested, everything that has proven to be sure is not accessible to me. I can't run to the altar like I used to. I can't press my way through the week just to make it to Sunday morning church house. My place of safety is no longer safe. Life around them looks like it was out of control. And it appears that God was silent and not moving fast enough. Sound familiar? Huh? God, where were you? Where are you? Can't you just fix it now? I've been going through long enough. What's taking you so long? Chapter 3 of 2 Peter opens with a firm yet gentle reminder. I love the Lord. Chapter 3 opens with one word that says, remember. Remember that I've written to you once before. Remember what the prophets of old said a long time ago. Remember Jesus' commands as told by the apostles. Remember that scoffers will be prevalent in the last days. They will mock all that you have learned to be true about the Lord. Oh, but above all, remember that you can't hurry God. The Lord will keep all of his promises. It might look like they're getting away with it. It might look like there are no consequences for their actions. Oh, but you just wait. Remember, Peter also said, but do not forget this one thing. Hallelujah, God. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Uh, we think of slow like a turtle moving at a snail's pace. Uh, we look at slowness as slothing around and not accomplishing anything. We look at slow as being delayed and not moving with great dispatch or intention. Uh, we look at slow as a negative connotation that is a nuisance in our lives. Instead, God is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come, hallelujah, to repentance. What are you saying, sister preacher? Oh, if God moved at the time that God really wanted to move, then most of us would be left behind. God's patience is actually working in our favor because most of the time, 99.99% of the time, we still need to get it together. The Message Bible says it this way. Uh, with God, uh, one day is as good as a thousand years. Uh, a thousand years are as a day. Uh, God isn't late with his promise as some measure lateness. Uh, he is restraining himself. Huh? He is restraining himself on account of you. Holding back the end because he doesn't want anyone lost. He's giving everyone space and time to change. Every day, God is patient with the world. Sister Preacher, what are you talking about? It's called grace. And God's patience ought to lead men and the women to repentance. Because if we just think about how God is slowly turning that page, 
instead of just flipping to the end of the book, it just bought us a couple of more minutes just to say, thank you, Lord. Uh, instead, men and women continue to rebel and to mock God. Uh, some think they have time on their side to get it right. You know how we think, well, I got away with it last time. Uh, God knows my heart. But that's when the patience of God is turned into a rationale to rebel further against God. Uh, nevertheless, God is still patient. Uh, Max Lucado continues his thought, doesn't God have ample reason to walk out on us? But he doesn't. Why? Because God is being patient with you. God's patience isn't naive. God's patience does not ignore misbehavior. God's patience is slow to boil. This is how God treats us. Patience is the red carpet upon which God's grace approaches us. Some of us would have given up on humanity a long time ago. Oh, but God is patient toward you, and God is patient toward me. In other words, you can't hurry God. Well, Sister Preacher, you keep saying the same thing over and over. What are you really saying? Well, I have a few witnesses. Uh, do you mind if I call on them today? Uh, God was patient with Adam and Eve's rebellion. Uh, he removed them from the garden, but he covered their nakedness and still promised a son to come and to crush the serpent. You can't hurry, God. Though the people were wicked, God's patience waited in the days of Noah before it rained 40 days and 40 nights. You cannot hurry, God. God was patient throughout Abraham's tragic lapses of faith. Oh, you can't hurry, God. God re revealed himself to Moses as a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. You can't hurry, God. God endured with astounding patience as the Israelites his chosen people grew cold and limped after other gods and wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. And we have trouble with 40 minutes. You can't hurry God. God was patient as he called Samuel for the fourth and the fifth time. You can't hurry God. God was patient with David in all of his transgressions, even though David was a man after God's own heart. You can't hurry God. God was patient as Zechariah walked around on mute because he didn't believe Elizabeth, his barren wife, would conceive John the Baptist. And we know how the story ends. You can't hurry God. God was patient with Joseph as the angel convinced him to not walk out on Mary who was pregnant with our Lord and Savior, but still by somebody else. You can't hurry God. You can't hurry God. Why, Sister Preacher? Because patience triumphed when the disciples couldn't heal the demon-possessed boy. Patience triumphed when they got scared in the middle of the storm. Patience uh, triumphed uh, when the disciples fell asleep while Jesus was praying and they walked with him and talked with him and ate with him. They were by his side every step of the way, but God still had to be patient with them. Patience prevailed as Peter cut off the soldier's ear in 
the garden of Gethsemane. Patience was at play as they beat him and mocked him and spat upon him and gambled for his clothing. Patience was demonstrated as Jesus hung, as Jesus bled, as Jesus died on Calvary's cross. Patience still lives today because Jesus has conquered the grave. Patience endured all night Friday and all day Saturday. Patience endured all night Saturday night. Just so on the third day morning, Jesus could arise. Hallelujah. And declare all power. Hmm. So you might be wondering what's taking God so long. What's taking God so long to show up with your blessing? What's taking God so long to drive your ship that you waiting to come in? What's taking God so long to answer the prayer that you prayed so long ago? You can't hurry, God. You just have to wait. You have to trust him and give him time. No matter how long it takes, he's a God you just can't hurry. But you don't have to worry. God may not come when you want him. Hallelujah, but God is always right on time. Come on, celebrate the Lord on today. Clap your hands, O ye people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. For God is good. God is great. You can do better than that. You clapped louder than that last night. God is worthy of all of our praise. And we say to God, be the glory for all that God is doing. Listen here. When you look around, things might not look the way that you want them to. In the natural or in the spirit. But you got to trust the God that you love. You got to trust the God that you know. And trust that God's timing is perfect. And that God is moving in a way that accomplishes his ultimate goal. Because if he presses fast forward, it's not just fast forward on you. It's not just fast forward on you. It's not just fast forward for your one situation. Fast forward applies toward the end. And if we get to the end before we're ready, my God, today, trust God to move in a way and in a timing that is perfect according to his will and pleasing in his sight. My brothers and my sisters, our ultimate goal today is to make sure that you are in relationship with God through Jesus. That you are in right relationship with God through Jesus. That you are in a healthy, functional, thriving relationship with God through Jesus. Sister Preacher, why do you say all of that? Because we know plenty of folks and we never speak to them. We know plenty of folks that when we see them, we pray they don't see us. Uh, we know plenty of folks that when we do, that thought comes to mind, that taste comes to our mouth and our side eye is in full effect. And I want to make sure today that that's not your relationship with God. Have you confessed Jesus as the Lord of your life and the
the Savior of your soul. Your answer might be no. I invite you to do so today. Your answer might be yes, but oh, Lord Jesus, I know I ain't been doing what you want me to do. Well, today is your day to make amends, to make sure that the relationship you have with God through Jesus is the one that God would want you to have, is the one that you want to have to ensure not only everlasting life, that's life after this life is over, uh, but to ensure that you have a quality of life that cannot be compared to anything that we can manufacture. Listen, on the next screen in our virtual sanctuary is the prayer of salvation. We'll even see it in here now. Hallelujah. Pray that prayer today and you shall be saved. If you're in the house, come on, walk down the aisle. Give me your hand. Give God your heart and make sure that you are saved today. Amen. Amen. We're going to celebrate the Lord as we still invite you to come. Our music ministry will come and lead us in a musical selection and I'll return with the benediction. God bless you. Amen. heaven in my view hallelujah that's my testimony for the week hallelujah with a made up mind I've got heaven in my view it don't matter what it looks like right here it might be foggy it might be cloudy it might be pixelated hallelujah thine the glory I've got heaven in my view amen amen
Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You look here. She probably going to fuss at me, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, uh, ain't she back here? I think she's for is a recording artist. Amen. Professional. That means she got an album. I downloaded mine. I can't tell you where to buy it. <laughs> I downloaded it. So, uh, amen. You got copies? Not today, but we, we can download it, and then we can order. And uh, she live up the street, so when she come back, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. 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 Listen, make this week count. Okay. Um, there's a lot that's been going on in our nation, even yesterday, as we continue to pray for the families of those lost in the shooting in Buffalo, New York. Be encouraged. It might look like the same cycle over and over again, but a thousand years are like a day, and a day is like a thousand years. God is not blind to what is going on with his people. Amen. Just wait. You just wait. We can't hurry God. Hallelujah. Y'all good? Let's get ready to go. Shall we stand and praise God from whom all blessings flow? Lift your voice. Heavenly host. Until we shall meet again. And now may the never ending love of God, the peace of God that goes beyond our mortal understanding, and the sweet fellowship of God's Holy Spirit rest, rule, abide, and govern us all now in the name of Jesus and forevermore. That sing together. Amen. Amen. Bless you.